we assume to you so this is the power series method yeah we're gonna solve this differential equation using the power series method so what we do is we assume solutions in the form of power series so we say we assume solutions of the form yeah y equals summation the power series you know the standard power series and equals zero to infinity um, of a n x n so this is a power series solution centered at zero okay and then what we do is we take derivatives and we substitute into the differential equation and the challenge is to go after those coefficients that the differential equation produces and either figure out what those coefficients may be or find recursive relationships that carry within them the seeds for producing those coefficients Yeah. So we find y prime, y double prime, and we plug them there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, the, um... so y prime yeah. will equal the summation. Now this is a standard in yeah. differentiation. Yeah. Have to start it. The n comes down. Yeah. So this is times n x to the n minus 1 and now you'd have to start it from n equals 1 right because the first term is a constant and the derivative of that is yeah. 0 and this goes all the way to infinity yeah. and also to get the same likewise series you would have to get with n minus 1 y double prime now differentiate this one more time so you get n times n minus 1 times a of n x to the n minus 2 and again the first term is a constant so this series is starting at the later one at n equals 2 and it goes all the way to infinity and now we will take y y prime and y double prime and we will substitute them in the original differential equation so y double prime is just this so n times n minus 1 times a n x n minus 2 yeah from n equals 2 to infinity minus x times y prime <coughs> y prime is this a n I should put the n first just to make it uh, look sexier so <laughs> an x n minus one yeah <laughs> right uh, minus y so minus the original and this is starting at zero infinity um, a n x to the n and this whole thing has to equal zero okay right. now um, you know I can multiply this x in there and absorb it into that x to the n minus one so this middle term becomes n equals one to infinity and a n x to the n minus 1 times x to the 1 will just give you x to the n because you add 1 minus this is n equals 0 to infinity a n x to the n equals 
zero, and this one comes down as this. Okay, now notice that all these series start at different ends, and furthermore, they have they don't have well, a couple of them have x to the n. They have the same general form, but the first one doesn't. It's x to the n minus two. And the challenge is to try to manipulate them by shifting the indices or doing some other kind of trick that would enable you to put all of them or most of them under the same summation so that you can go after your coefficients. And usually you'd always start these indices are not a problem because you can forward or backward the summation. What you always start with is to make this x to the n minus 2 yeah. identical to the other two general forms. So you're going to try to make this x to the n. And the way you could do this is you could say, OK, how about I just change colors here. How about I just call k? to be n minus 2. What would happen in that case is this becomes x to the k. And with this logic, n becomes k plus 2. So whatever there is an n, you're going to go and replace it by k plus 2. So let's do that. So if you do that here, n is k plus 2 equals 2. So this is the same thing as saying k equals 0. Yeah, because that, that is k 0. Yeah, because you're starting k <coughs> two terms earlier, and this is starting two terms later. So they cancel the effect. You yeah. could look at it this way. 0 times wherever there's a, an n, I will plug in k plus 2. So k plus 2 times k plus 2 minus 1. So this is just k plus 1. And this becomes a to the k plus 2 and x to the k, because n minus 2 is k. Right. OK? So it's a one to the n, a to the n minus 1. You shift the index on, uh, yeah, so you shift it on the first one, too. Yeah, and right. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, when you shift the index, you, the um, well, when you shift the index, you get a to the um, or a of n minus 1. Right, so, like, like shifted. so I'm going to make them all start at 1. Yeah, well, I mean, like this here, like when, I, when it's originally um, n0, then you, you would have it. Yeah, so watch how I will shift the index. So at k equals 0, this becomes 2 times 1. Yeah? yeah. Becomes a 2 a is 0, because k is 0. x to the 0 is 1. Okay, But I, I also have to shift the index on this one, on the last one. So when n is 0, this becomes a 0. So uh, uh, wait, this is a uh, n equals 1. This is 2a 0 plus um you agree uh, or minus minus right yeah. uh, minus if if k is zero this becomes two times one is two uh this becomes oh wait uh, I must stop here this is uh, a of n which is n is k plus 2. This is k plus 2 here. You agree? Because uh, n is k plus 2. 
So this becomes 1k is 0. This is 2a of 2 minus a of 0 because I also have to shift the index on this one. Plus, now, this is starting at 1, and I, since this k is a dummy variable, I can just replace it back by n. So this is n equals 1 to infinity, n plus 2 times n plus 1 times a of n plus 2 x to the n minus this is already starting at 1, so I don't mess with it. I leave it as is. And a n x to the n. And this last one here, I also absorb the a0 outside. So now this is beginning at 1 and going all the way to infinity, a n x n. And I set all this equal to 0. Now they all are starting at the same index, and they all have the same general term. Correct? So, so now I could say this is 2a2 two two minus a0 plus, I can now write them under the same summation, right? n equals 1. I can factor out x to the n from all of these, so n plus 2 times n plus 1, a's of n plus 2, minus n plus 1, a's of n, all multiplied by x to the n, equals 0. And now, of course, for this to equal 0, the corresponding coefficients for the polynomials, because these are just a bunch of polynomials summed up all the way from 1 to infinity in addition to the two terms outside, for this to equal 0, all these coefficients have to be 0. So that just means 2a2 minus a0 has to equal 0, which makes a0 or a2 equals Uh, a0 over 2. You agree? And then, of course, also, this guy here has to equal 0, which makes, uh, so let me write this down, so n plus 2 times n plus 1, a's of n plus 2. If this is equal 0, that just means, if I move this to the right, this just means n plus 1, a's of n. This goes away. And now I can get my recursive relationship, which tells me that a's of n plus 2 has to equal a's of n over n plus 2. And this here is what I'm after. So now, in addition to this here, so now when n equals 1, what do I get? I get a3. 3 equals a1 over 3, because n is 1. And when n is 2, what do I get? a4 equals a2 over 4, but a2 is a0 over 2. So that means a4 is just a0 over 2 over 4. 2 times 4. And if n is 3, I get my a5 equals a3 over 5. But my a3 is just a1 over 3. So this becomes a1 over 3 times 5. And when n is 4, I get a6 equals a5 over 6. But my a5 is a1 over 3 times 5. So this is just a1 over 3 times 5 times 6. 
and then equals 5, what do I get? A7 equals A5 over 7. But my A5 is A1 over 3 times 5. So this is becomes A1 over 3 times 5 times 7. What is it that I'm doing? I'm expressing all my coefficients in terms of only two coefficients, A0 and A1. And I have two initial conditions I can solve for those two coefficients. So I can take this and plug it back into the original solution of y equals a of n x to the n from n equals 0 to infinity. So this is a0. What's my a0? Just a0, right? Plus a1. What's my a1? a1 times x plus a2. What's my a2? a0 over 2. plus a3, what's my a3? a1 over 3, x cubed, plus a4, what's my a4? a0 over 8, x to the 4, plus a5, what's my a5? a1 over 15, x to the 5, and then I could keep on going. I hope this illustrates the point. Now I can plug in my initial condition. What's my initial condition? Y of zero equals two. So that mocks out all the x terms and you get a zero equals two. And the second initial condition is y, y prime of zero equals one. So if you differentiate this, and plug in 0, that knocks out all the terms except a1. And you get a1 equals 1. So you were able to solve for those two coefficients whose entire infinite coefficients are a multiples of those two coefficients. Therefore, you've evaluated all the coefficients of the series from, one to from 0 to infinity. So now, to write it down, the final solution will be y equals a0, which is 2, plus a1x, which is 1 times x, plus a0 over 2, which is 2 over 2, x squared, plus a1 over 3, 1 third x cubed, plus a0 over 8, a0 is 2, so that this is 2 over 8x to the 4, plus a1 over 15, a1 is 1, so that's 1 over 15x to the 5, plus etc, etc, etc. So you could see that I'm able to evaluate the solution of my differential equation by evaluating those coefficients. Right. And that concludes that question.